that you don't get it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Ebony K. Williams, joining us today. And let's get in some front page news. We are going to go to uh, a little more somber news here in our front page news. Of course, uh, yesterday we put to rest our dear brother Tyree Nichols uh, mm-hmm. in Memphis, mm-hmm. Tennessee. A father gone too soon is really the, the takeaway from that. Uh, Tyree, only 29 years old. This mm. young brother didn't even make it to 30. Friends and family and civil rights leaders, including our Vice President Kamala Harris, which we'll hear from in a second, all gathered. Um, I thought it was important, y'all. Let's start with hearing the words uh, from the most important person in the room, Tyree Nichols' mom. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out to pay tribute to my son. Tyree was a beautiful person. And for this to happen to him, it's just unimaginable. I promise you the only thing that's keeping me going is the fact that I really truly believe my son was sitting here on an assignment yes, from yes. God. And what mm-hmm, she's referencing mm-hmm. there, y'all, is I know it's you have to just take a beat, right, to just hold the space for this woman's enormous grief. Uh, and we as a nation are, are grieving with her, right? It's, Absolutely. It's a lot. Uh, Mr. Nichols was a stopped uh, traffic violation, alleged just reckless driving, simple, small infraction, really. Uh, five officers were charged with his beating death. They kicked, they beat uh, this young brother to death. He died several days later in a hospital. And, of course, what's been so devastating for a lot in the culture, all five officers black. That's right. We're seeing investigation, though. We, this is important to note of some tangential players here, uh, medical MTs, things like that, that include some white people. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be investigated. There are more charges to come. So far, all five officers have been dismissed from their police duties and charged with second degree murder. What I love is, you know, when we talked about this story yesterday, uh, Charlemagne, you talked about uh, and you agreed it would be a good day to talk about the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Miss mm-hmm. Nichols agreed. Let's mm-hmm. listen. I just need... <laughs> Whatever that George Floyd bill we needed passed. Yeah. yeah. We need to take some action because there should be no other child that should suffer the way my son and all the other parents here have lost their children. We need to get that bill passed. How important is it, Charlemagne, do you think that this woman took this moment in her deep grief to make that call to action? I think it's very important, but uh, I don't think it's going to change anything. You know what really? I mean? Because it's not going to make any of those politicians move to want to pass that bill. Because if, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it did, if a, if a mother's tears mm-hmm. is what moved people to pass that bill, that bill would have been passed a long well, time what's ago. What's the importance factors of the bills? Like, like, what is the important factors of that bill that will... Getting rid of qualified immunity. Mm-hmm. That's, that's one the of them. Main, that's An- the main one, another right? Another one... Well, I think that's a huge one. I also think, though, Envy, there's a statute that talks about use of force because that's what we keep talking about. Mm-hmm. I was here with y'all about five years ago. We were talking about Stefan Clark and how there were no that's charges right. there. And it's because the op- opportunity for police to use deadly force is so wide open. Mm-hmm. And this bill, Envy, narrows that. It mm-hmm. brings it in. It mm-hmm. holds them to a higher standard. And that's important. Uh, speaking, though, Charlemagne, okay, you say... Is it going to move the the politicians? Because that's really where the movement needs to be. Let's listen to our Vice President Kamala Harris. This violent act was not in pursuit of public safety. It was not in the interest of keeping the public safe because Tyree Nichols would be with us here today. Was he not also entitled to the right to be safe? So when we talk about public safety, let us understand what it means in its truest form. Tyree Nichols should have been safe. I think she's got to go even further to be candid and say, right? Well, and say, when we talk about public safety, we're talking about white safety. That's right. That's that's really the the, the, the thing that's not being said. It's like, when have black people ever been truly safe in our our black bodies? In this 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 nation. No. No. Let's be honest. It all sounds like car salesman stuff. Nothing ever changes. They say the same speeches, the same time. We need to do this. We need to do Mm -hmm. that. But when do we get to the point where we actually do it? She spoke on the George Floyd police tonight, too. She did, yeah. She did. Let's hear uh, about... As the United States Senate. Senator, a co-author of the original George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. And as Vice President of the United States, we demand that Congress pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Joe Biden will sign it, and we should not delay, and we will not be denied. It is non-negotiable. 
What's missing for me is you got to name names. You and you talked about names. this on um, when you had the vice president on your Comedy yeah. Central show. You got to say, uh, Brother Tim uh, Scott in That's South right. Carolina, who claims that you also want to move forward on police reform, come on to the table. Mm-hmm. You got to talk to Joe Manchin. Mm-hmm. You got to talk to the holdouts. Mm-hmm. You can't just have this generalized call to action, kind of like Envy saying, now now it's car salesman talk, that's unless right. you're going to name the names. That's, that's all name I'm saying. Name the names. Or what's the, what, what Monique say? Keep it on the school, school ground? That's right. <laughs> and, you know, even though we know uh, that was for the cameras because politicians never stop campaigning, sure. I am happy that, you know, uh, Kamala and the brother's mother called for the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. You know, at least on, on Kamala's part, we know it was, you know, just for the cameras, right? But mm. why does it have to be a reaction to another unjust murder? at the hands of the police. It shouldn't take another black person dying at that's the hands of the pr- police for you to call for this legislation. Because that's like, when like, they have the pressure on them. Like that's the why. legislation is literally named after a victim of police brutality. Whose Correct. family has changed since then. was also there putting to another yes. black brother, Mr. Nichols, to rest. Uh, if we have time, can we hear from the Reverend Al Sharpton? We'll do it when we come back, right? We'll we we come, we come back. Okay. I, I, and one last question. Did they show up at anybody else's funeral? I, and see, that's what I said. That would too, make right? me feel funny. If I'm George Floyd's family Yo. or any other, mm. other other victim's family, I, I would feel funny, too. You come to this brother, which you should have, but you ain't because come to nobody else's? Because it's headline news. Because it's headline news. You ain't news. come to nobody else's it's, funeral? It's, and for me, it's great to you show up. You care about nobody else? It's great to show up to that funeral, but to me, the optics are way more powerful when it's a woman of color you know, at the funeral of a brother who's been killed by white officers. Mm-hmm. Then you can address the system of white supremacy and the corrupt right. police system at the same time. You know what I mean? I just, I, I want the VP to talk about the George Floyd Policing Act more, because like she said, she is the co-author of that bill. Sure. And I would think that the co-author of that, co-author of that bill would talk about that bill all the time, not right. just as a reaction to another black person getting killed. And identify the holdouts that are making it not a That's reality. Right. Well, we'll get That's to right. more of it uh, next hour as well. But right now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again 800-585-1051 it's the breakfast club good morning morning everybody it's dj nv charlamagne the guy we are the breakfast club let's get in some front page news front page news yes y'all yesterday we laid to rest the dear brother tyree nichols 29 Mm -hmm. years old gone far too soon Mm -hmm. father someone's son uh we we talked earlier about how his mother spoke of course at his funeral vice president kamala harris spoke but what we didn't get to is the good al sharpton reverend al sharpton who has led the community and culture through so many instances like this he had words as well is that five black men that wouldn't have had a job in the police department in the city that Dr. King lost his life. Not far away from that balcony, you beat a brother to death. There's nothing more insulting and offensive to those of us that fight to open doors that you walk through those doors and act like the folks we had to fight for to get you through them doors. I understand that there's needs to deal with crime, but you don't fight crime by becoming criminals yourself. That ain't the police, that's punks. So here's where I think the, the, the I was going to say the ancestors, excuse me, misstatement. The uh, elders in the culture are actually very important mm-hmm. because he is connecting dots there, y'all, with really like geographically, this is where Dr. King was assassinated, mm-hmm. not gave his life because he didn't give nothing. Mm-hmm. He, he was taken he was away. Killed, he was murdered. He was assassinated. And, and within a, a throne stow, you black men who really live in the legacy of Dr. King execute your own brother. Mm-hmm. I do think that type of cultural correlation is important. And that's what I talk about in Bet on Black. Uh, beyond that, I like that Al Sharpton talked about, uh, you know, that's not protecting crime, but Let's be clear what Tyree Nichols will stop for, y'all. Allegedly, reckless driving. Shouldn't lead to that. That's not even not really of criminal nature like that. I was going to ask you earlier because yeah. I thought they said that after watching the cameras, they found out that he wasn't driving reckless. That's why. That's why I said allegedly. Mm-hmm. Uh, only the officers' reports right. are even suggesting that right now. The prosecutor's office, great point, Envy, is not even collaborating with that right. argument. They're not mm-hmm. even cooperating. For all we know, that brother could have been doing nothing wrong, and that's right. probably what the prosecutor will argue. I, right. I still wish uh, Al Sharpton, Reverend Al, would have addressed the system of policing, though, because based off the clip I just heard, Reverend Al made it seem like this is an isolated incident, especially when he said this isn't policing, this is punks. Well, if that's the case, we've seen a lot of punks then, because this seems like the norm yeah. in regard to policing. And I, and I totally understand scolding them because, you know, they're black and it's, it's, it's black police officers, but it's not just black police, police officers who do stuff like but, this. But this, is also, this. this was a funeral, though. This was a eulogy, though. 
You know what I mean? This this wasn't his platform to well, talk about well, everything. Well, everybody went up there and addressed uh, politics in some way, shape, or form. Mm. Everybody did. I have a question. Something you said uh, triggered me. I've been having this in my group chats. Should the black officers be held to an even higher standard because they are black? Well, that's a cultural thing, right? That's, that's us. That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Because we we hope that you know uh, black people get in those positions, mm-hmm. and that's how they change the culture. Yeah, I ain't of talking policing. about the law. I mean, us culturally. Nah, I think mm-hmm. they should just get no. life regardless. I, regardless, I, I, I don't care if they black, white, Asian, yeah. Spanish. It doesn't matter. They, well, uh, they should be held that, to the highest a, point of the law. No, it's a now, nu- it's a nuanced answer, right? Because yes, as black people, I do hold them to a higher standard. Because you correct. shouldn't do, you they shouldn't look like do us. your yeah, brother absolutely. like that. Yeah. But when it comes but to just the system of policing, justice, I want right. that all to be the law same. Law is yes. equal, but That's for right. me, I'm I'm more right. outraged because yeah. you should understand correct. the humanity yes. of your yes. black brother better absolutely. than some yes. white yeah. person who is systematically yes. otherizing us. I agree. Yes. Yeah. I, I do hold them to a higher cultural standard personally as a black person. As a black person. Yes. All right. This one's interesting. I want to get your take on this, Envy. I know you were. Talking about it a little bit. Biden pr- is proposing a new bill, new piece of legislation. It's got a junk fee part like in it. Yeah, I know you like this. Like it cuts this. out hidden fees, y'all, for credit cards, uh, concert tickets. We saw, mm-hmm. you know, all the ticket master of it all, all yep. that going on in the U.S. Senate. Uh, and it would target four excessive types of fees specifically. Online concert tickets, yep. sporting events, which I hate. Yep. Uh, hotels. Uh, hotels. Yep. Air fees. Yes. Airline fees. Yep. All these little hidden costs that take it. your shopping cart expense from $50 to $250. Let me just tell the people exactly what it is. When you yeah. go to book a hotel and the hotel says $99 and you go there with $99 and then they tell you they charge your resort fee of $29.99 and now your hotel is $130 and you don't know where that resort fee is coming from. Yeah. That's the fee they should take off because I never understand that. Same and thing what's with it the, going towards? Same thing with the airlines. There's an airline fee. Where does that money go to? I just paid my ticket. Why do I got to pay an additional $40? Yeah. Same thing with sporting events. If you go to a sporting totally. event or any show on Ticketmaster, any of those things, you pay, uh, let's say, $30 for the ticket, then they charge you a $9.99 uh, ticket fee. What process is that fee? Yeah, quote, what is that processing quote processing. Fee? Hey, man. Yes. I've been feeling like that since the days of buying Little Debbie's and McDonald's value meals. Now, I'm talking about taxes, though. When something is $0.99 cents and it's a dollar five and all you got is a dollar and now you're looking around for a nickel <laughs> that's tax kid though. you can't hurt about that i know but that's a junk fee to me you know what i mean when you go to mcdonald's and the, the value meal used Just to be 299 that was 324 because taxes three or well, 314 back then oh it was 324 because uh, i think the taxes are higher you know over here. and all you got is three dollars yes you thought it was 299 that's you thought you had an extra penny that's right when i was young and didn't know any better yeah. about taxes when you were a kid and now you're not that's a kid right. anymore charlamagne but that was a junk fee to me then yeah no i agree taxes are a junk fee period can we get rid of taxes can, right. we pay taxes a, can we consider taxes a junk fee? Mr. What? IRS, uh, that's not Rashawn talking. That is Leonard. That's Leonard. But, you know, Ebony K. Williams <laughs> is saying, Ebony K. Williams is saying uh, get rid of these income tax. I don't mind a consumer tax. Mm. If, I, if I'm using a good, I'll pay your tax. Okay. But that income tax, that's my money. Give me my money. Word. Tell you, because you don't want to pay no taxes. I do, not on my income, Envy. I'm going to tell you why, though. Well, tell I, me. I'll make an argument. Tell me. Because my federal government, nor my state or local government, has shown me that they are good stewards of my Ooh, money. That's right. Why? We don't know where our bread going. That's yeah. right. That's right. We, they, got, that's we right. got failing public schools. That's right. right. We that's got right. cracks in the road. That's we got right. bridges that are barely holding well, up. Well, the schools right. should be your, your your housing tax, which you pay your taxes on, on your house. That should be the schooling. But yeah. the things I have well, questions. Well, I spend a lot of money on my house, y'all, uh, Envy. So that's the school tax. Yeah. That's, that's where your kids go to school. Mm-hmm. But like when you talk about the roads, I want to know where that, that happens. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the judges, the prosecutors, the police officers, the firefighters. That's supposed to be your regular tax. Yeah. If I knew my supposed money was actually going to make other people's lives better, I would have no problem with that. Same. But I don't know where that bread is going. Therefore, right. I'm with Ebony K. Williams. Yeah, a lot of it's going to the military. <laughs> eliminate <laughs> taxes. Yeah. Eliminate taxes. No new taxes. <laughs> Call us the new tea Jesus. party. Jesus. All right. All right. One more. Uh, we got time for it? No, no. We got to no, go. we got to wrap? Yeah, All we right. got commercials. But uh, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Ebony K. Williams is here. You know she's an attorney. So let's hold court. Yeah, I know you, you listen to her podcast, Holding Court. Mm-hmm. You sure. know what I mean? Where she gives out a lot of uh, great legal advice. Right. I'm sure that y'all might need some legal advice right now. That's right. Right, 800-585-1051. If you need legal advice, call her now. Come on now. now. This Think about it like this. Advice, this is man. free. If you call an attorney, you know they're going to charge you $1,000 just to come inside <laughs> and then $500 an hour. That's right. <laughs> We're getting it right now for on the low low. 800. As far as we know. We might get invoiced later. <laughs> we might get invoiced later. <laughs> I don't know. As far as we know. <laughs> All right. So if you, got some, uh, if you need some legal advice, you got some questions, call us now. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Come on. 